Today I'm going to take a look at this Industrial Scientific TMX412. Now this is a multi-gas monitor. It detects both oxygen and methane, that's the uh, CH4, and it will tell you the parts per million and the uh, basically the percentage where it will be explosive in the atmosphere, like it's the lower exposure limit, I believe, which is uh, kind of like a, a safety warning of when it's gonna be a bad day for you. Anyway, uh, yeah, this one's in terrible shape. I got this for like $4 on eBay with free shipping years ago. And uh, yeah, the label's all worn off and there's a little port here with what looks to be some kind of like coax connector. And then on this side, there's a weird port with an expensive Limo connector. And yeah, all these labels are in bad shape. You can see some of the millions of safety approvals. Uh, you can watch Mike Harrison's teardown of a personal gas safety detector. Uh, it, it, he goes into much more detail of um, a lot of the safety stuff that is involved in making one of these. But uh, yeah, this thing just has like a beat up old lanyard, some kind of test button. Uh, I've tried powering this up, but up, it doesn't want to power up. I don't have a battery, but you can take this panel off and get to the contacts. And yeah, it doesn't want to power up. And I've, there's a mode button, and these are presumably LEDs that flash, and there's a uh, probably a ridiculously loud buzzer. And Yes, this is the charging port, which is some kind of weird, just like metal stud. And this is apparently the RS-232 port for programming. Now, I happen to know that on the inside of this thing, it is covered in some kind of tar-like substance. Now, I don't know if that's leaking from one of the chemical-based detection modules or if it's just the rubber degrading, because I don't know how old this thing is. So I am going to don some lovely gloves and put down a bit of paper towel. And we'll see if we can remove some of the stuff that's just horrible. Okay, so, uh, see, already on me. On one side, we've got this kind of fiberglass like mesh that seems to be just uh, acting as a filter for the input and a nice LCD with oh god see it's everywhere <laughs> um, yeah this just looks like a standard LCD it doesn't appear to have too much safety stuff on it although there are a bunch of resistors and caps here uh, it's certainly not like the one Mike tore down where it was loaded with um, diodes and other things for protection, but maybe we'll find some later. So it's got this gasket, which is covered in the tar goo. And uh, I see where we are. Okay. So, yeah, there's a big concentration of it in this shrouded area. Let me see if I can reach my zoom without destroying my camera. Okay. And yeah, see, look at that. And keep in mind, I've had this thing for years and this thing, st this stuff hasn't uh, hardened over time. Uh, there's also just a flex cable going for the uh, buttons on the panel. Not that that's all that interesting. So these are the little detection modules. And I'm trying to determine, it doesn't look like this thing's leaking. At least not this one. Hydrogen something or other sensor? Hydrogen sulfate sensor. Okay. And this one, carbon monoxide sensor. I'm just taking these off because they have a lot of the goop on them. So yeah, this seems to be coming from this 
coating that they're um they, it looks like they just put in this stuff around the sensors and it's probably some, acting as like a conformal coating to keep uh moisture and stuff out of it so uh, i'm probably gonna just unscrew this and take this whole module out because that looks like it'll take most of this goop with it uh, i'm obviously going to have to uh, change my gloves <laughs> so give me a minute Okay, so this just says industrial scientific. This might actually be the source of the goo. Because there seems to be a big blob of it on the bottom here. Let's see if this main board wants to come out. There's something down there. I don't know what it is exactly. Oh, it's just a plastic sheet. Hang on. It looks like it is just used as some kind of... Uh, sealing compound so there's a bit on this thing so i'm going to try and clean that up a bit so we can take a look at it i'm going to try and clean this thing off i don't know if i can it's just absolutely caked in it um yeah i think i have some some rubbing alcohol here let me see if that works at all i don't think it will this stuff looks pretty horrific okay does 99% alcohol work on it? Oh, it does. Okay. Okay, so this is the oxygen sensor. And it's just connected at the at the top with these two metal contacts. But yeah, I don't, I'm not going to bother opening this thing up. It's just too covered in goop. And on this board... this up so there's another filter of some type right here Let's see if I can pull this off it does have electrical contacts on it the rest of this board looks like it's just probably op amps or no um just transistors to turn everything on and off and yeah that's marked as oxygen but this one I'm not so sure about oh, good it looks like it's in pins. There we go. Okay. So, give me a minute. Let me uh, get rid of all of this crap and clean my other hand. And ugh. Getting this the rest of the way apart is looking to be a little awkward. Um, just as a side note, you can see how corroded the battery terminals are. They uh, must have left a battery in there. I don't think this came with a battery. But I got it so long ago that I might have just thrown it away. Yeah, even these terminals are all corroded with what looks like um, residue from a battery as opposed to just like salt water or something. So these are all the uh, coax and limo connectors and stuff. And I'm just trying to get this last board out. But there's this spring in there. I'm going to try and just snap it. Ooh. No, oh, hang on. Spring seems to be bent around something. Hang on, let me use my safety glasses since I'm going to need them anyway. Jeez, all that. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else in here. It's just the light guides and stuff for the LEDs. I'm going to throw this away, change out all this, and clean up. While the main board is drying, since I had to wash it off, uh, let's just take a look at this real quick. This is just a couple LEDs, well, four of them, and a sounder, a button, and it looks like probably some drivers for the LEDs, maybe op amps and control circuitry for the battery charging maybe eh hard to tell anyway uh that's not too interesting this is what we're here for uh i cannot remember which one of these is which so i will try and put in an overlay because i can't i took the uh, labels off when i was cleaning them so i have some safety glasses on and uh, we'll take a look at these now this thing i don't expect to get into this looks like it's like a sintered metal container 
Uh, this does have a serial number on it. I'll uh, Google that and if I can find anything. and I'll uh, put it in the overlay, but I don't think this is going to... Yeah, this is incredibly strong, actually. Wow. So I'm not positive what this is a detector for, but whatever it is, it uses a uh, kind of like sintered metal. There's a four terminal connection that's potted on the other side. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty hard potting compound. All right, forgot that. Let's try these guys. So the both of these have uh, just a resistor and a small PCB with four terminals. Uh, okay, wow, it's a very thin PCB. And if these things start oozing horrible liquid, I'm gonna just call it quits, but we'll take a little look in these if we can. Okay, so just got a filter on the top. And small hole, and there's also a filling port here, I think. This looks like something that was capped off. Seems they just clip this thing on and it does not want to come off. I can't say I'm too worried about getting in here. It's not the end of the world since it's just going to be a little chemical thing with filters and uh, a little electrode hookup. So, these things are pretty difficult to get into, but it looks like there's just a little plastic spacer with the, uh, yeah, this thing just clips on, so. And then underneath, oh, I can see signs of moisture. That's no good. And some kind of gasket. It's weird, it's like a rubber. It looks like rubber, but it's also got this like wet component with some no doubt horrible caustic or acidic nonsense on it. And then, oh, it's multi layered. There's another one. These uh, side cutters are cheap, in case you're wondering. Well, yep, yeah, that's a filled compartment in there. And that's interesting. It's got like it looks like a bobbin for a sewing machine in there, but it's filled with liquid. See, some sloshing around in there, and then you got the electrodes. Well, that's as far as I'm going to go into that thing. I don't want anything to do with what, whatever the hell that stuff is. Okay, so since I have no idea what chemicals are in either of these since the covers were or the labels were completely covered in that goop uh, I have changed over all my tools except for this uh, this I just cleaned I have gotten myself some new safety gloves because who knows what that liquid was on that first one <laughs> and what it will do if it mixes with this one and I've also changed all the uh, paper towel so, uh, I assume this is built in the exact same way. So we'll just pop that off. Yep, same filter. So now you have to try and cut in and go around the edge since this is clipped on. And that will take a little while. Oh, come on filter, leave me alone. Okay. 
right. it seems this is a slightly different design because this gray section seems to be separating into two parts. I don't think the other one did that. Uh, I'll continue to try and get this red part off so we can take the gray section off as one piece like the other one. I don't want it all just breaking open immediately. Actually, you know what? I believe it is the same design because I think that second layer of filtering and separation is uh, actually also gray on the outside. But it looks like, yeah, there we go. Okay, so it does look like it is the same construction. We have a membrane, or sorry, a filter on the top. And then in here, we have a membrane with electrodes hooked up to it, and it's a liquid. Obviously different chemicals, but the same construction. So nothing too interesting in there. Let me clean up, and then we'll just look at the main board. That's pretty much all that's left. Here's the main board. You can see it's got nice gold plated pin, uh, turn pin headers. And there's this weird corrosion stuff all over it now, which I think is just from all the 100% uh, isopropanol alcohol I had to use to get all the black tar stuff off and it just doesn't seem to want to come off. The only things of interest on this board really are this main microcontroller and this small TC500A uh, ADC. So uh, yeah, it looks like it's all just like op amps and other stuff to amplify the signals it's getting. And there's a little nylon washer here which has a small, looks like a choke. Yeah, it's weird. It might be a choke or a transformer. It's marked as an inductor, though. But, uh, yeah, it's got something going on over there. And then we've got this large chip, which looks like a Motorola part. So let me see if I can just pop this off. I'm just realizing now that this is the same part number format as the uh, that sintered metal detector. So I don't think we're going to find uh, anything on that thing because it's probably some internal part number. Well, the microcontroller is a Motorola 68HC705, which is a pretty standard 8-bit microcontroller. And looking around, there's really not much else on this board except this very interesting package. Now, it looks like it's a, um, a clock crystal just like a quartz crystal in there it says 2m so it's probably a 2 megahertz crystal but i have never ever seen a package like that well i've definitely never seen an oscillator like that before it's uh it looks like they're the quartz is just suspended there it looks like just a regular uh clock oscillator that you'd get but oh, it's in this weird glass package it looks almost like the glass is just glued on the top. I don't know. Yeah, very interesting. I've never seen one like that. I'm sure they're not cheap.